So joining me now for more on what President Biden uh, decided to do on the D.C. crime bill is the district's Mayor, Mariel Bowser. Mayor Bowser, really appreciate you giving me a few minutes here. Good to see you. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you. Um, let me start with, um, when did President Biden tell you that he was uh, not going to veto this bill? Oh, we learned um, from reports that he would not um, be that he would sign the bill. I, I mean, I think that is what has been reported. If um, the Senate uh, went with the with the Republican uh, disapproval resolution, if he had called you before making that decision, what would you have what would you have said to him? How would you have made your case to him on what to do? Um, I think we would have wanted to let the senators make their votes. Um, and we recognize that it was a, a tough vote. The president had issued a pretty um, direct and very supportive statement of administration about D.C. autonomy. Uh, and we wholeheartedly agree. President Biden has been a vocal supporter of D.C. home rule and statehood uh, for Washington. Um, now, our position now, I, I think it's clear. I'm not a supporter of what the D.C. Council right. did with the bill. I made uh, that very clear in the legislative process. Uh, and I vetoed the bill. Uh, unfortunately, we live with the indignity of limited home rule in this in the District of Columbia. We're taxpaying Americans. Uh, we're in the shadow of the Capitol, but we don't have two senators. We don't have a vote. Uh, and we've been working for decades uh, to change that. And until we become a state, uh, we live with this process. And this process includes the duly elected officials here in the district, uh, yeah. 13 council members and myself, but it also includes the Congress uh, and the president. And that's exactly uh, what needs to change. I've called on our council um, to change the bill locally um, so that it's a bill that both updates our criminal code uh, but also keeps the district safer. Is there, um, look, the, uh, the council put out, the, the council's not happy, obviously. Uh, I'm curious, what do you make of the disconnect between you and the council on this issue? I mean, I was surprised, I wasn't surprised your veto was overridden. I guess I was surprised it was overridden 12 to 1. This feels like, you guys see this, th this issue completely differently. Well, I don't think you should be too surprised. Um, this debate uh, is playing out in cities and towns across mm -hmm. America, uh, especially in the face of, of rising crime. Uh, I have been on, on the side of making sure that we have a fair system, um, but also a system that holds uh, people accountable who've committed crime. Uh, I have been in favor of a system where we fund the right number of police, um, that we have public safety officers in our schools. Uh, and there is a, a pretty significant philosophical debate about that. Uh, but I think you know, Chuck, uh, Chuck you're in our region. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just went through an election process. Uh, I was elected uh, to lead the city, to tell DC residents what we need. And I my number one priority uh, is keeping us safe. So now what we have to focus on is what's next. Right. Um, if this vote um, goes uh, with the Senate Republicans or the House Republicans, uh, we still have a job to do here. And my intent is to work with our council on legislation uh, that addresses some yeah. of the things that I think uh, has have made policing and safety more difficult in the city in recent years. Look, and, and look, you want another chance to do this. That's why you vetoed the bill. They didn't want to have to negotiate. Now Congress is essentially putting putting this back in your lap to have a negotiation. I'm curious. You don't like how this was done. Does the ends justify the means here or not? I will never say that we want the Congress meddling in the affairs of the District of Columbia. Uh, that's a, a slippery slope, again, that we endure, um, not with just bills like this. Override hasn't happened in 30 years, um, but we have had other interference, right. like riders. On, on our budget bills. Like, for example, we can't uh, use local dollars to support women seeking reproductive health care. We can't tax and regulate marijuana because of a rider that literally one uh, Republican from Maryland put on our bills. So we have a lot of issues uh, to overcome with limited home rule. And I right. won't even get started on the executive actions that we need, like having control of our own National Guard. Uh, so the answer, the bottom line 
to this. And, and you've heard me say it ad nauseum. We have to deal uh, mm -hmm. with the problem of 700,000 people in right. the nation's capital. Uh, not being represented in the Senate and having full autonomy. No, it, it's that, that part of it is just the, the more time, which more Americans would spend some time here and understand that, uh, and they might be as outraged as you get uh, about this. Let me ask you about dealing with crime. You yes. want to have 4,000 police officers. There's fewer than 3,400 now, which is actually fewer than there were in 2018. How hard is it to find qualified new police officers? Well, we are overcoming a year uh, where we were defunded uh, and we weren't able to hire for a year. Uh, and we're also in, in an environment where we're competing with jurisdictions across America. And that's I'm glad you asked me that question, because I think that is part of the public safety policy work that mm -hmm. I want to do with our council in the months to come. Uh, we want to we know what it takes um, to have a, a the police department that the community trusts uh, in a police department that works with the community. That's mm -hmm. how you have uh, a, a safe, uh, a safe city. Um, and what do you think President Biden could do about getting people back into downtown Washington? A lot. Um, and this is, uh, uh, we have a, a lot of issues. We have a, you, a special relationship with the federal government. We're proud to host the federal government. Uh, but I've asked the president, and you recall um, from his last State of the Union, not mm -hmm. this year's, but the last State of the Union, he declared um, to everybody, to employers and to workers, it is safe to go back to work, go back to your downtowns. We know the federal government is about to roll off of the um, public health emergency yep. as well. I think another impediment um, to work. Uh, and what we want to see is a more centralized policy, Chuck. What we see in Washington uh, is every agency kind of has its is doing its own thing. Uh, and I think yep. the result is in some agencies, they are 100% telework. Um, some workers are coming in one day a week. Uh, and as a result, you don't have a vibrant downtown. Uh, and we know that the, the downtown and the capital of the free world should be vibrant and bustling. Right. People come to work in Washington to change the world. And we want to see them um, doing exactly that. It has real life consequences mm -hmm. uh, for cities. Um, when we don't have our workers. Yep. And I just hope that we don't see that have an effect on our investments in public education and public safety. Uh, it, uh, and great it all goes hand in hand. The crime it rate, the education hand. rate, the, all of it. It all goes hand in hand. Fill up yes. the downtowns and, uh, and I promise you the crime rate probably actually goes down. Anyway, Mayor Absolutely. Bowser, uh, Mayor of D.C., appreciate you spending a few minutes with me. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.